Hi, this is Dr. Anand Kumar. I'm the uh, founder of ADR Plexus and uh, today I'm here uh, to discuss about the big news uh, that is the next uh, proposal draft uh, which has been put in the NMC site and uh, which is going to be uh, two steps of exam for the MBBS graduates and uh, also the same uh, exam next one is going to serve as a merit-based uh, exam for entering to post-graduation uh, seats in India. So let's have a quick uh, timeline of how uh, post-graduate exams have been conducted in India. So, till 2012, 50% uh, of the seats in uh, Indian medical colleges, post-graduation seats, were filled uh, through All India Postgraduate uh, Medical Entrance Exams. And the 50% of the state uh, government medical colleges uh, exam would be uh, conducted with the state uh, uh, directorate of medical education. And uh, there were two major exams. Apart from that, all the private medical colleges and deemed universities used to conduct their own entrance exams to fill the post-graduation seats in India. So government thought of unifying these exams under one exam uh, called the NEET PG and a uh, uh, lot of cases were put uh, in uh, 2013 against NEET PG. Finally, in 2016, uh, NEET PG uh, came into existence and this NEET PG exam was a single exam through which uh, all the post graduation seats across India, the NEET PG scores were used for filling the all the post graduation uh, seats in India. And uh, apart from that, uh, the institutes of national importance like AIMS, PGI, Gipmore, and Ammans, they used to conduct their own exams. Later, again, uh, all these four institutes were unified under an exam called NSET. And uh, this was the exam till uh, 2022. And uh, from 2023, uh, December onwards, uh, the next PG, that is next step one and step two is going to come and as per the draft proposal uh, given yesterday. And apart from that, uh, for entering into post-graduation in the institutes of national importance, uh, namely AIMS, PGI, GIPMO, and IMANS, as usual, INA set exams will be held. So uh, let's uh, have a, a kind of uh, a brief on a, a national exit test next. And what are the three important things it is going to serve? It's going to be uh, for qualifying the final year MBBS, that is for entering into the internship, the next step one is going to be useful as well as passing next one and next two is mandatory to get a license to practice modern medicine in India. And apart from that, the scores of next one is going to be used for the merit-based allocation of post-graduation seats in India. So one exam is going to serve three important purposes and uh, it has been really worked out uh, by the National Medical Council to bring out the uh, uh, kind of uh, definite change in the uh, medical education in India. So let's look into uh, what is a national exit test. It's going to be conducted as a step one and step two. And uh, they are given a rough uh, timeline how this exam is going to be uh, held in uh, 2023 December. Again, uh, they haven't specified uh, the year 2023, but already uh, uh, there is a notification which is already out, which I will also show it in the uh, upcoming slides. But uh, this is going to be the timeline how it's going to be conducted for a final year MBBS student in 2023 December. So second week of De December, it's going to be a, a multiple choice of exam, MCQ exam. Uh, which is going to be called as next one, which will be held in the second week of December, followed by there will be a university practicals conducted by the university, which will be held in the first week of January. And the results of next one will be released in uh, second week of January. And in the fourth week, the university practical results will be announced. So once a candidate in the final year passes the next one, as well as the university practicals, he gets an entry into the internship, which is going to be in the February. So one year after completing his internship, that is on the 28th of February, the following year, he'll be exposed to another exam, which is called next two, which will be held in the second week of March. 
and the results of which will be declared in April. So this is going to be the uh, timeline which has been updated uh, in the next draft proposal which has been released on uh, December 28th uh, in the NNC site. So let's have a quick recall how the news have about uh, next has been uh, coming up in uh, the various medias. So exactly on uh, 30th July 2021, uh, there was a press release saying uh, that next uh, is going to replace NEET PG and NEET PG 2022 will be the final NEET PG as per the press release on 30th July. And uh, after that, a lot of uh, news about uh, Next has come. Let's have a quick uh, look into what are the news which has come regarding Next and uh, why exactly the government wanted to introduce Next uh, and wanted to replace NEET PG. So what happens in India for MBS uh, graduate is that uh, the MBBS uh, course duration approximately is five and a half years. And uh, after one of five and a half years of MBBS, uh, they enter into one year of uh, preparation for uh, active PG preparation. So usually uh, after MBBS, once you finish the internship, the success percentage of doctors getting into post graduation is very less, which is 0.2%. So one full year, they go for an active preparation. And even after that one year preparation, the success percentage of doctors entering into post-graduation seats in India is 20%. And uh, that's because the MBBS seats is roughly double the uh, amount of post-graduation seats in, available in India. This competition is really high. And uh, usually it takes another year, which is approximately two years. So altogether, an MBBS graduate uh, is approximately spending around uh, six and a half years to seven and a half years to enter into his uh, uh, post graduation after the entry into MBBS. So mostly what happens, uh, the success percentage of doctors getting their uh, favorite post graduation seats after two years of profession is almost 50% in India. So this two years period uh, is going to be uh, a great uh, uh, kind of uh, stress on the system. And uh, the government wanted to introduce this uh, post-graduation, uh, uh, the merit exam, right from uh, when they are going to finish their MBBS. So this uh, is going to save a lot of time for the MBBS graduates to enter into uh, the post-graduation. So this is one of the uh, kind of uh, things discussed in the NMC. And, uh, the other news is, which has come in 2022 is that uh, there was uh, uh, a case in uh, Delhi High Court where uh, the NMC has categorically said they will be introducing an exit test in uh, 2022 and uh, this exit test is going to replace the NEET PG exam. So in this they would have said uh, this may be the last year NEET PG that takes place. We will come out with the national exit test. And uh, they have just put uh, the, uh, this in Delhi High Court in uh, uh, exactly on uh, 28 March 2022. Okay. And after that, uh, there was another news, uh, which is again uh, a discussion uh, which had happened. It was not a confirmed news, but it came out in the newspaper saying that there are going to be uh, three uh, steps of exams. Uh, in next, which is going to be next one, next two, and next three. The next one is for the basic sciences and paraclinicals, next two is for the clinicals, and next three is for the clinical and the practical OSCE based exam. That is after finishing the internship. But uh, this was actually uh, the news which came, but uh, this was denied by NMC. And the next important thing, the official notification uh, which came in the NMC site is that uh, they gave the tentative academic curriculum for the MBBS batch, uh, which was called the original 2021 batch, but of course they joined MBBS in uh, 2022 January. So in this, they gave the tentative timelines, which again confirmed that next is going to happen. And uh, for that batch, they gave a clear cut uh, guidelines saying that uh, they'll be finishing their uh, first year in uh, 2023, which is going to be uh, 
uh, they are going to appear for the first year MBBS exam in uh, Jan 19 as far as a uh, uh, few uh, uh, medical councils are concerned, uh, few state medical councils and uh, almost by the end of February they will be finishing their first year and second year they will be finishing by 2024 and the pre-final they will be finishing by 2025 and uh, most importantly uh, this batch will be appearing for their uh, next one in 2026 and this was what uh, they have given in their uh, uh, tentative guidelines and uh, this again uh, reconfirmed the news that the next one and next two will be implemented in the academics of uh, an MBBS graduate and uh, when all the news was going uh, about the next PG introduction the government said on 23rd September clarified that they are going to conduct the final need PG on uh, March 5th 2023 and uh, this need PG is going to be the final one and in 23rd September, they said they will implement next PG and in probably on 2023 December onwards. So they have clearly said in this, uh, they are going to, uh, the next is going to be operational within three years from the commencement of NMC Act 2019, 25th uh, September 2022. And is to be conducted through such a designated authority and in such a manner as may be specified regulations by specified by regulations. So this was a uh, next uh, release which came in 23rd September, reconfirming the fact that it's going to be next from 2023 onwards. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, look into the probable scheme of exam, which was uh, uh, put forward uh, across uh, almost two years back itself and they have reconfirmed the same thing in the uh, proposal which was given yesterday. So it's going to be an exam, uh, six papers and uh, it is going to be held in uh, three days and uh, the first day being the medicine and the allied subjects in which uh, dermatology and psychiatry will be included, 120 questions um, and uh, in the evening it's going to be pediatrics with 60 questions. And day two, uh, it's going to be surgery, anesthesia, and ortho, 120 questions, followed by ENT and uh, 60 questions. And the day three, it's going to be obstetrics and gynecology, along with uh, radiology, and uh, followed by ophthalmology in the evening. So this was available across the forums, uh, uh, even uh, two years back. So now let's have a look at, quick look into the uh, proposed uh, draft regulations, which was put in the site uh, yesterday, uh, that is December 28. And uh, of course, uh, everyone can send uh, uh, with your uh, uh, kind of uh, tagline uh, comments on draft regulations regarding national exit test to the above email ID. So let's uh, have a timeline process, which I have already discussed, how it's going to be implemented for a MBBS graduate. Okay, who is going to uh, uh, finish his final year, after his final year, how he is going to face the next exam. This is the guidelines which I've already discussed. Now, uh, how the, regarding the modality of the exam, it's going to be a uh, MCQ, which can have one or more than one type of uh, multiple choice. So probably uh, it's going to be like a multiple answer type also. And it's going to be a computer-based online exam. And six papers, as discussed uh, in the previous uh, thing, how the exams, uh, what are the six papers. Let's see, uh, it's going to be a common centralized all in the exam. So it's going to be like a, a kind of how an APG is being done in a single day, or, or like it's going to be a common all in the examination. And uh, probably uh, it will be uh, uh, given to, uh, probably it will be given to uh, authority or body like, uh, NAT board or aims, it will be given by the NMC, but uh, later they will be announcing it. And uh, the subject tested, I have already said, uh, it's going to be six subjects. Apart from that, they have also said uh, the applied aspects of uh, basic sciences, uh, namely anatomy, uh, physiology, biochemistry, 
along with uh, the paraclinical, pathology, pharmacology, and microbiology. 10% of the questions will be uh, coming across the six subjects. And uh, another important 10% of the questions, which is going to be a major deserting exam, which is going to be the PS, which is going to come across these six subjects. So this is the uh, subjects which is being covered according to the proposal. And uh, anyone who fails in the next one exam, so they have given a criteria for supplementary exams. And uh, what is the criteria is that uh, anyone who in a year, if he fails in one or more subjects, he can appear for a supplementary exam. And uh, by passing the supplementary exam, he can enter into uh, the internship. So they have also mentioned those who do not pass both the next step one regular and the supplementary exam for a particular year shall be able to appear for the next step one regular examinations only in the following year, which means if a student is not going to pass the exam, both the regular exam as well as the supplementary, then one full year is going to get wasted. One full year, he has to wait to appear for the next one regular exam. And uh, they have again uh, said uh, there is no restriction to the number of attempts to appear in next one, provided the candidate has passed next step one and next two examination within 10 years of joining the MBBS course. And uh, there is no restriction to the number of attempts to appear in the next step one regular examinations to improve the scores. Now this comes for the post graduation. See, any MBBS graduate will first aim at passing the exam. So they will not aim at scoring high. Okay. But when the same score has been used for post graduation merit, they eventually have to reappear to boost their scores. And in the fourth point, they have said there's no restriction to number of attempts to appear in the next step one regular examination to improve their scores, provided they have kept a checkpoint. These examinations for improvement and scores are taken at least after one year of completion of step two. Okay. So improvement scores, the checkpoint, what they have kept is like, can be taken at least one year after completion of next step two. That is, after they finish the internship, probably even during the internship, they cannot take it. And only after completion of step two, one year after that only, they can improve their scores. So this is going to put a lot, lot of stress on a final year MBBS student. Apart from passing, they also have to aim at getting a high score if they want to enter into the post graduation as soon as they finish their uh, CRI activity. So, uh, in the fifth point, uh, they have said the next step one uh, shall replace the conventional university theory final MBBS exams. Okay. So, these are the salient uh, things which they have updated in the proposal. And uh, thus, I'm just explaining for your clarity. So, this is for the MBBS students. Okay. Now, uh, regarding the type of questions, it's widely available. It's going to be problem solving and analytical type 65% of questions. Uh, comprehension, it's going to be 25. And recall, it's going to be 10%. Okay. So the idea of uh, implementation is that uh, it's going to be a complete changeover where uh, most of the questions are going to be uh, clinical uh, vignettes and uh, case-based scenarios. So that uh, they are going to uh, evaluate the competencies developed by an MBS graduate through these exams. And uh, usually the uh, 30 to 40 percent of recall type, which usually happens in an EPG, it's getting considerably reduced to 10 percent. So this is going to be a, a very dynamic change in the medical education, which is going to happen. And uh, they have categorized it as a must know 60 percent and this has been clearly uh, defined in the nmc curriculum okay uh, 
uh, NMC uh, curriculum for medical education for the undergraduates. Uh, people who are following this uh, closely, they know, uh, must know, nice to know and may know, and how these questions are going to be tested. Okay. And uh, the probability loss scheme of the exam, as, as uh, given in the previous uh, drafts, it's the same thing which they have put. And uh, they have given uh, the same uh, proposed time schedule of papers. That will be uh, uh, a rest day between uh, day one and day two, uh, as well as uh, there's a rest day between day two and day three. And uh, exactly uh, the same uh, thing has been put in the recent uh, proposal also. So regarding uh, the bigger question uh, on the basic sciences and paraclinicals, uh, 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 it is going to be 10% uh, of the questions, but again, it's going to be applied anatomy, applied physiology, biochemistry, and applied uh, micropath and applied uh, form, along with uh, forensic medicine questions. Uh, this is going to be a dynamic uh, uh, change, where, whereas in neat PG, almost 50% of the questions are from the basic sciences and paraclinicals. Now this is being reduced to 10%. So this is going to be another important change to be uh, uh, noted. And next, uh, the importance of PSM as usual is retained. In fact, it is increased. So if we calculate around 540 questions, 10% of 540, 54 questions are going to come uh, from PSM. It's going to be a single exam, which is going to be really important in uh, getting a pass, as well as getting a higher score in next step one. So apart from this, uh, let's see like uh, what are the uh, scoring patterns. The marks in next step one shall be calculated as raw scores and they'll be converted to percentages for uh, 100. The minimum marks, most important, the minimum marks for passing shall be 50% for each subject. So all six subjects a student has to pass. And uh, for the next step one, in each of the six papers, the minimum is 50%. So it's going to be uh, one of the challenging exams for uh, uh, the MBBS graduates. Okay. So apart from that, they are also given a, a wide uh, uh, kind of uh, discussion on how next to that is after the internship how uh, and uh, it is going to be conducted next step two it's going to be a practical clinical and a viva oc uh, examination and most importantly here they are given again the pre-final subjects namely uh, the ent and ophthal they will also be tested Okay, even if a candidate has finished pre-final year right now and finished the practicals also, again, they have to sit for a next step to after, after and uh, ENT. So it's going to be a practical examination. And they have also structured the next two, how uh, it is going to be evaluated and the method of the exams. So the method of the exam, it's going to be objectively structured OSCE based, so probably a station based, uh, the more of kind of a lab uh, kind of uh, exam is what we expect. Uh, clinical based uh, scenarios and simulated cases can be kept. So here, the key parameter which is going to be evaluated, it's going to be the clinical skills uh, of a MBBS graduate who has finished this internship and it's clinical decision making skills. And more importantly, they have also mentioned the communication skills. So mostly uh, they are getting it uh, very standardized uh, in next two. And uh, they have clearly mentioned uh, this exam will be held by the respective health universities. And the guidelines will be given by the NMC. If the health universities do not exist, the commission shall decide the institution authorized to conduct step two. So if someone is going to have an idea that the same medical college in which they are doing it is going to be the conducting body, I think there's a catch in it. NMC will define who's going to conduct this exam for the particular medical college, okay. The next uh, two scoring pattern, uh, the next uh, two scoring pattern is just a pass or a fail based on the skills you acquire. So it is going to be a exam which is going to evaluate your skills. So it's going to be a pass and fail. They are not going to give you a score on it. Okay. 
so at the end they are going to give you uh, your satisfactorily passed next two two so the next two criteria also they have outlined the criteria that the exam will be held once in a year and uh, there will also be uh, someone who hasn't passed next to there will be an immediate supplementary exam and uh, it is going to be held only for the candidates who have failed and uh, those who do not pass okay and clearly please note this clearly note please note this there are no six subjects there are seven subjects there is a seventh subject okay so please have a look into it uh, there is also a seventh subject okay and uh, they have mentioned this uh, those who do not pass both next step to regular and the supplementary again they need to wait for one full year so the exam is not going to be conducted every six months probably this can be given as a suggestion to the nmc probably uh, but the nmc has clearly worked out all the possibilities okay all the possibilities one of the excellent guidelines they have come up with and uh, those who do not pass both next step to regular and the supplementary they shall be able to appear for next step to regular exemptions only in the following year so it's going to take one year so and uh, again they have just mentioned there's no restrictions for the number of attempts provided they have to complete the whole mbbs within the 10 years of joining the mbbs so now coming to the most important criteria which is going to the eligibility for admission to postgraduate uh, medical courses in broad specialty subjects so the actual draw marks percentage scores out of maximum 100 with the decimal fractions obtained in next step one will be only calculated for your merit so next step one is the only exam which is going to be applicable for your entry into post graduation now most important thing your first attempt should be the the best attempt any mbbs graduate uh, who is going to be appearing for this next step one please have this in mind your first exam should be the best exam i elaborate on this uh, most important why i say this is that your merit score to be calculated from the sum of pro scores obtained in each paper okay so there are six papers the sum of pro scores obtained in each paper in case of failure the score will be calculated from the sum total of pro scores in each paper obtained in both regular exam as well as a supplementary exam in which the candidate has secured marks which means your first attempt marks will also be calculated even if you pass in the supplementary with the high scores your first appearance which is called the next one step one regular will also be taken along with the supplementary exams okay so please make sure that any mbbs graduate who is listening to this make sure that your next step one which is called regular is very important and passing this is very very important with the high scores in case any candidate who fails then the next supplementary exam scores will be take will not be taken for the merit based allocation it will be an average of it and that's what nmc has said the total marks percentage of those candidate who appeared in next step examination to improve their scores for example i as a mbbs graduate i have passed my next step one and i have entered into my internship but for entry into post graduation i have to boost my scores so nmc has a catch here total marks percentage of those candidates who appeared in next step examination to improve their scores shall be calculated from the average of the last three consecutive scores you got this 
so even if i get the the best score in my uh, third attempt they are going to take an average of my step one regular for which i entered the exam to get a pass that exam marks is going to travel for 3 years and for the purpose of determining merit especially for admission to broad specialties the next step scores shall remain valid for 3 years so this is also an update given by nmc so the most important thing a take home point you should have is that your first attempt while you are appearing for this exam as a first year mbbs uh, sorry uh, a final year mbbs graduate you should give the deep best attempt to get the pass along with the high scores because this score is going to travel in case if you want to boost your scores or improve your scores for entering to post graduation also the first score with which you got the pass which is called next step on regular is going to travel in the way of average which has been clearly defined by the nmcs okay so this is going to have a lot lot of effect on uh, how people enter into post graduation okay now nmc probably for doctors who have finished uh, mbbs already and who are already doing their internship probably uh, they haven't given the guidelines over here but probably uh, we can expect the release in uh, coming days and uh, if you have any uh, uh, doubts regarding uh, the same guidelines and if you want to represent uh, to nmc you can uh, share the comments uh, on this draft regulations through the above email id and uh, you need to write a email comments on draft regulations regarding national eligibility test to the above uh, email id and uh, this is all about the summary of the thing which has been uh, uh, put in the site so thank you one and all uh, let's look forward for a few more updates from nmc in uh, 2023 and uh, i think uh, a better clarity within uh, 30 days expected uh, from the nmc thank you one and all